friends, I am so excited for today's video because today we are detectives and we are setting out to solve a murder mystery. Not just any murder mystery either. We are endeavoring to solve Agatha Christie's and then there were none. And we are joined by my friend and fellow YouTuber all the way in Australia. Christiane Jones. Hello, I'm so very happy to be here. I'm really glad we're finally able to do this. Oh, yes, seriously, this has been how long in the making? I think actually it's been about eight months. Seriously, Christy and I have gone back and forth so many times. We've wanted to do this video for so long, but there are just so many logistics to figure out, aren't there? Yes, as it turns out, we're both very busy people and the time difference does not help. Yes, exactly. So. I believe there's a 16 and a half hour time difference between Christy and I. Currently, it is about 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday, my time. What time is it for you? 7 a.m. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> really even thinks it's crazy. You are actually in the future compared to me. And it's spring going into summer here, whereas it's autumn going into winter for Christy. Which is actually perfect because on the hottest most sweltering days of summer when I'm craving autumnal content. I can just pop on over into your world and watch your videos. I know, and when I miss autumn and cozy content, I can pop over to Morgan's channel and watch your videos. So, especially around Christmas time or when it's winter, obviously because it's not cold mm -hmm. here for Christmas, I love watching your videos because they're so cozy. It's really lovely getting to sort of pick what type of like seasonal content you want to watch based on the hemisphere of the person you're watching. So Christy. Considering that you're in the future and I'm in the past, I think we have the upper hand on time for solving this incredibly complex murder mystery. As does Monsieur Rue. Yes, Rue, I know you're going to be a very good detective and hopefully you can help us solve this very widely loved mystery. So friends, if you have not already, go ahead and make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea or any cozy beverage. We have a murder mystery to solve. Cheers!
friends and fellow detectives, we have reached our first checkpoint. I am 50 pages in and already so much has happened, so I thought I'd better check in with you all. But before I dive into it, I would just like to say I'm about to provide so many spoiler alerts and so will Christy. This entire video is an analysis of this novel, so if you have not read or if you hope to read and then there were none, maybe skip the rest of this video. But if you'd like to solve this mystery with us, go ahead and get your magnifying glasses ready. <laughs> Not that you'll need one at all. I just feel extra cool carrying one around as a detective. Um, let's dive into it. So we've been introduced to all of our characters. We're first introduced to them on different train carts as they're traveling to the coast of Devon, off of which lies Soldier Island, their final destination. And each of them has been invited to Soldier Island by a mysterious Mr. or Mrs. Owens, or an acquaintance of their past. And I'd say that the action got going pretty quickly because shortly after their arrival, a mysterious loud voice is played over a gramophone that accuses each and every single one of them of murder. Afterwards, chaos erupts, and that is where I have left off. So far, there hasn't been any crime on the actual island, and I'm not especially suspicious of any one character. However, each character is extremely untrusting of the other people, which makes me not trust any of them. And of all the characters described, Bloor, Vera, Lombard, MacArthur, and Marston are the most sketchy. And given my past experience with murder mystery novels, I feel inclined to pin one of the least suspicious. So if I had to guess, at this point, 50 pages in, I suspect Wargrave, Armstrong, Brent, or one of the two Rogers to be our murderer. But there hasn't been a murder. Let's check in with Christy and see how far along she is and who she has her eye on. At this point in the story, I absolutely agree with you, Morgan. I think it's going to be someone unexpected. This book was written in 1939. You know, it's one of the early, really significant mystery thriller stories. So in reading this book for people during that time, this would have been one of the first times they encountered a mysterious, thrilling story like this, just because of how the crime genre has developed and when it developed. I think it's going to be someone unexpected and someone shocking, because I think it's more of a modern thing to make it the person you expect because you're expecting the person you're not expecting, if that makes sense. <laughs> For that reason, let me take a look at my notes. My gut tells me that it's Lombard because I think genuinely that Lombard is evil. He seems like a really, really bad guy. He seems shady from the very first moment. From the first moment that Vera is perceiving him on the train, she sees him as having this cruel little mouth. He's sort of staring at her in a predatory way. He seems like your typical scary, predatory potential killer. Um, but I think because of that, he's far too obvious. So he's probably going to be a red herring. So far, I think it's going to be someone completely unexpected like you. I think it's going to be Emily because she seems like the least likely person to round up a bunch of people, bring them to an island and then murder them all. So I think at the moment that maybe it's Emily. <laughs>
had to. I couldn't help myself. Yes, the plot has thickened indeed. Our murder count is up to three people. So far, Anthony Marston has choked to death. Mrs. Rogers was killed in her sleep. And now General MacArthur has been found dead with a big bash in the back of his head. There can be no doubt that one of the guests is a murderer. The question remains, which one? I agree with Christy, or I had agreed with Christy, I most suspected Emily Brent. Anthony Marston choked to death after drinking poisoned whiskey. Of all the people in the room, Emily Brent was extra careful to only drink water. Everybody else had alcohol. Emily Brent was also seen leaning over Mrs. Rogers shortly after she fainted. Who's to say she didn't poison her in that moment? Also, we've just discovered that Emily may or may not have multiple personalities. That being said, they're all terrible people. Lombard, I think, is the worst of them all. He's extremely racist and openly admits to having murdered 20 plus people. So one might think that he would be the murderer. However, I think that's too obvious and Agatha Christie does not seem obvious to me. So I don't think that it's Lombard, but honestly, I'm not confident in any of them. Let's see what Christie has to say about the whole business. So I am now currently up to chapter 11 um, and I agree with you entirely, Morgan. I think Lombard is really dodgy. Like he is a terrible person. He's so hateful. Like I just, God, I don't like him. And I almost want him to be the murderer because I don't like him. Like I want to see him come to some sort of justice for being a bad person. One of the things I found a little bit strange, Rogers, right? The caretaker who is essentially like a servant to everyone. He helps prepare everyone's food. His wife dies really, really early. And yet he just keeps carrying on and like serving people and bringing them food and cleaning up after them and doing the whole thing. And it's like, dude, your wife died. Like you can grieve. Your employer, your boss is a murderer. You don't have to be scared of getting fired. Like, wow. And so I was like, maybe it's Rogers because that behavior is very odd. Rogers is now dead. So he's not the murderer. I wonder if yeah, it can't be Lombard. It absolutely can't be him because as I said earlier, it would be like a reverse red herring for him to be the murderer. Regardless as to whether or not he's the murderer though, he still seems like the most evil person here. Anyway, they all seem like terrible people and at this point it could be genuinely any of them. They're all dead. Everybody's dead and it's still not obvious who did it. <laughs> what the heck? There's still an epilogue left. I'm baffled. I am absolutely baffled. So to take you all through, when we last spoke, Anthony Marston had been killed. So had Mrs. Rogers and General MacArthur. Shortly after, Mr. Rogers was murdered. 
Then Emily, who was my number one suspect, followed shortly after by Wargrave. Then Armstrong went missing. Bloor was killed. Armstrong's body was discovered and it was just Lombard and Vera. And then Vera shot and killed Lombard. He's the only one that wasn't mysteriously murdered. We know for a fact that it was Vera. And then Vera committed suicide. But I do not think she was responsible for everyone else's death because she was with Lombard when Bloor was murdered. But then I began to suspect that they were each killing each other, that there was no one murderer. And honestly, this is the only conclusion I can think of. Or there's somebody else on the island somehow doing this that was never discovered. Maybe Christy has some other theories? Let's give her a visit and see what she thinks before all is revealed. So just finished chapter 16, got to the very end. I was like, oh my God, it was Vera because Vera killed Lombard, right? So unless something went wrong and Lombard wasn't supposed to die, then Vera was the killer. And I was like, oh my goodness, it's Vera. But in the end, she was the last soldier left on the island. She fulfilled the nursery rhyme and she upsettingly committed suicide, you know, and then there were none. <laughs> That's the title of the story. So we're all done. The end of chapter 16, still not sure who it is. I had the exact same theory as you, Morgan. I thought maybe they're all killing each other. Maybe there's like blackmail involved. Maybe they're all like conniving and scheming against each other and thinking, okay, I'll be the killer. There's a really creepy line in there as Vera's in the house by herself. And it sort of implies that she's not in the house by herself. So I had the thought process of what if it's a ghost? <laughs> Couldn't tell you who I think it is. I have no idea. I was really confident. I'd come out of this with a very strong theory, but I still don't know. So yeah. <laughs> Let's go read the epilogue and finally <laughs> find out. We have reached the end of the end. Whoa. Did you see that coming? No, absolutely not. I didn't. Me neither. I was quite surprised by that, actually. Orgrave was the murderer. <laughs> Honestly, I'm shocked. I had absolutely no idea it was him. I really quite liked Wargrave, if I'm honest. I really enjoyed his logical mind from the perspective of a detective. It was extremely satisfying to read through his reasoning and his step-by-step -step analysis of the occurrence of events. Yeah, absolutely. And look, it makes total sense now because he's a significant point of view character, right? Like he had to be unemotional yes. in order to not give too much away. So he came across as quite trustworthy. I know. He actually seemed like a voice of reason. I would even venture to say that of all the people on the island, 
I trusted him the most. I completely understand that perspective, I think. Personally, I trusted Emily the most. I really mm -hmm. believed in Emily. And so that's why I thought she was the murderer for such a long time, but I get trusting Wargrave, like that makes yeah. sense. I also was quite surprised by the way this book was written. You know, it was published in 1939, right at the beginning of World War II. And so I expected something a lot more challenging to read, but it felt very modern and almost quite a bit pulpy as well. Yes, that's a really good point. Overall, I really enjoyed the novel, especially when I consider when it was written. I do think that Agatha Christie is the foundation of our contemporary expectations for what a murder mystery novel is. Yeah, absolutely. Or should be today. Yeah, definitely. I was shocked by the ending of this novel. I honestly don't know how anybody could have predicted it. No, I absolutely didn't. But it wasn't necessarily a satisfying kind of shock because it was so unexpected. I do wish that I had been a little bit right. Yeah, definitely. I feel like there could have been more elements mm -hmm. of foreshadowing towards the beginning. And I think yeah, that we I wanted that saying, because yeah. we're more modern readers. We expect mm -hmm. these yeah. things to happen. But I wonder if the readership back in 1939 yeah. would have been really shocked and satisfied by this ending because it would have been such a twist mm -hmm. for them. I also want to say as well, like, to do with the historical content, there are a lot of problematic elements here, <laughs> and I wonder as well if the problematic elements were there because Agatha Christie was trying to depict horrible people specifically, mm -hmm. and Emily was kind of a foil to some of those bad values, like she pushed back against the racism sometimes. Yes, exactly. There was a horrible amount of racism, sexism, and just terrible morality in this book, but I think that in including such traits, Agatha Christie was just trying to emphasize the deplorable nature of our characters. And to your point, this was written in 1939, and thank goodness we have come so far as far as appreciating and respecting humanity goes. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was interesting to see the perspective of this novel written in 1939. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it overall. I thought it was so good to read such an influential book and for that reason I want to give it four stars because of how significant it was at the time. But if this was published this year and I read it, it probably would get a much lower rating for me. It was so much fun to read it and to get this historical and pop culture context. It was so much fun reading this book with you, Christy. I think that I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is a great rating. Overall, I really enjoyed the experience of reading this book, especially with you. This was a really, really great time. I thoroughly enjoyed both solving a mystery with you and editing this video together. Thank you so much for joining me, Christy. Absolutely, and thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun and I'm really glad we got to do this together. So thank you very much, Morgan. Thanks. Well, I think that that about wraps it up, but before I end this video, I did just want to say I think that each and every single one of you would love Christie's channel if you enjoy bookish content as well as videos focused on writing. I think that you'll really enjoy her channel. And later this week, Christy is actually posting a video that we did together for her channel. It's another collaboration. And it goes live this Sunday, right? Yep, yeah, so Sunday night for me, but mm -hmm. Sunday morning for you. <laughs> yes, this Sunday, June 19th. We'll see you guys on Christie's channel. Absolutely. Cheers! Cheers.